Say hi to the people. See, ah, uh, good kitty. Borderlands 3, the sequel everybody's been waiting for that doesn't have a pre. Welcome back to Just a Quickie, where I go off script and just tell you my opinions on games and stuff. This time, standing up. So, Borderlands 3. What is it? Somehow you have no idea what Borderlands is. It's a stylistic first person looter shooter. Where there's a bunch of RPG elements, but it's also a first person shooter, but and so you loot and you shoot and you kill and that's that's the game. You loot and you shoot, you loot and you shoot, and then you, that's and then people die in the result of that. Now you can say How is that fun? When I put it that simple, it's like okay, it's just kinda of repetitive. But, Borderlands does it in a way that is not repetitive, either with plenty of different enemy types, even if they are the same models, they change the type up, Bun bunch of different guns. Billion is just a marketing ploy though, It's that that's not as many guns as there are. Because a lot of the guns have, are like the same types of guns, but then there's just elemental differences about them, and you know, so there's slight tweaks to guns that you already have, but you might like them better, or they might be better in different situations than the other one. Yada yada yada. Now you have your launchers, you have your pistols, you have your submachine guns, you got your assault rifles, you got your snipers, and your shotguns, and that's about it. And but all those have plenty of different variances. This is, this is. now the best part about this game is the writing. It has always been a comedic series, ever since Borderlands 1, it's always been raunchy, adult humor. And it's great. There are certain changes to the game that makes me think that they're still trying to play it safe. Like they changed the midget enemy to t Tink, right, T-I-N-K, to not offend anybody even though it's an M rated game that definitely offends people so minor changes like that is interesting but it is still m-rated comedy humor bloody but like comically blood because it's like a comic aesthetic just like the other games were it's basically if you take borderlands 2 and then you kind of opt it a little bit but the main travel mechanic not only are you on Pandora, but you're on a bunch of other planets too. There is space travel. And they treat it like it's a normal thing. Even though you've never left Pandora except for that one moon thingy that happened that one time. And you got new antagonists because obviously Hans Jack is dead and the first one didn't really have an antagonist. It was just finding the vault and then there was a giant scorpion looking thing. And then you kill the scorpion thing and then that's the end of the game. Borderlands 1 didn't have a good ending, but I think that's widely known. Anyway, so you got, uh, I forgot the names, but it's a brother and sister, and then you find out they, they're connected to the first Vault Hunter. Spoiler alert, by the way. So you got, you know, robot, or robot arm dude. He's just like, yeah, what up? And then the chick's just like, yeah, what up? They're very, they're all about the social media. You know, getting the views, and they're all cool and stuff, and the chick's hot, it's great. But they're also crazy. So, new antagonist, and they're basically trying to destroy the universe with the Great Vault, and then you gotta stop them, but they keep on stopping your tracks, and things happen, bad things happen, and then good things happen. That bad thing happens, but then that ultimately results into the best thing that could happen. And then, yeah. That, that's that's the story of, of most things ever, really. So yeah, uh, the planet hopping is nice because you got now you got different themes and different locations to look at. Yeah, Borderlands 2 had that too, but Borderlands 3 just expands it. Borderlands 1, that's it's that's mostly desert looking. There are some differences, but it seems like every iteration of Borderlands outside the pre-sequel and it has upped aesthetics the more places to travel 
and more things to do in those travels. Bosses are great. My favorite boss is the Pen and Teller boss, which is pain and terror. Get it? Get it? You get it. Because, you know, Pen and Teller. And they voice them. Like, Pen voices pain, and obviously Terror doesn't speak, but they credit Teller as the voice actor, which is hilarious. The meta is comedy. Think about that. It's great. It's just great. It's still more Borderlands. So if you like Borderlands, and you want to play even more Borderlands, then play this, because it's definitely more Borderlands. Camera died. Alright, this is later in the day. Let's get back on track. Alright. So, like I was saying, if you like Borderlands, Borderlands 2 and all those games, then you would definitely like Borderlands 3. It's just Borderlands with more. Now, I personally don't like the characters that you get to choose as much as previous games. Like, I, I like the other Sirens better, even though this Siren has does have a kit that you can have be really good. And the Beastmaster is really good. Uh, he's probably the coolest one out of the bunch. Uh, the Machine Chick, I like her personality, but her special is like, eh. And then the other dude, yeah, he's there. I think collectively the communities thought that that is the worst one. Not saying he's bad, and he's definitely, you could use him for sure. But, if you're going to put these four on a tier list, he's going to be on the bottom. I personally like the Siren. I always choose a Siren every time. And then if I do a second playthrough, then I'll play something else. Just to make it different. But personally... I like Siren, they're more interesting in design, but also in their abilities, and I like that. And this game does have a new game plus, which I don't think the other ones really did, where it's a harder version of the original game, again I could be wrong, the other ones might have it too, but it's a harder version of the game, and you, everything carries over and you just kind of play through it, the, the harder version. And that's probably what helps you get to level 50 plus and get all the extra stuff. And all the footage that you've been seeing is from when I went over to New Game Plus. I'm like, okay, I guess this is a thing. I really wish the New Game Plus had like a, like, acceleration mode. Like, if you're playing New Game Plus, this is the mode that you could only get if you beat it already. Why do I have to see the same thing and sit there and be born like I already know this. Oh, and, oh, you're making me pick up the handgun that is three times worse than what I already have. Cool. Stories, stories, great. The stylized, the aesthetic and graphics, great. Nice that comic book feel. Weapons are great. You know, some better than others. I don't know why you get choose a submachine gun. That one's kind of useless. But I think if you're a Borderlands fan, this is a must get. If you're new to Borderlands, uh, play the other ones first, so then you can you can kind of get the feel of the story because it does throw a lot of references from the past games, and you're gonna be a little lost. Like it's not needed, but it will definitely help the experience much more if you play at least one and two. Pre sequel kind of helps two out more than anything, but you catch my drift, right? Right? So, that's it for today's video. If you like this episode, thumbs up. If you want to see more from us, subscribe. And until next time. Bye.